Hello, I am Sir Badian. Uh, you might know me from places such as Reddit and my guide on Imgra. Um, today I will be starting my Let's Play of Aurora 4X for all you fine people. <clears throat> so, what's going to happen is for the first episode, I'm pretty much going to just run through all the basics, um, things you're going to see. Um, in generation and when you first start playing um, <clears throat> most of it's going to be probably fairly fairly dry so if you want to get stuck into it or if you're familiar with all this um, we can just you can just skip to the second episode right away so um, let's get stuck into it for all the new people <clears throat> so this is going to this is the map generation the universe generation window uh, you get to it when, when you first see open Aurora you will see a window like this which is a game selection because you can have multiple games running and when you hit the new button you will see a window like this now i've already made the changes so i don't have to come for them on the spot um so here is the name of the game which is visible up here in here is a space master password um space master is a mode that basically is kind of like an admin mode it lets you do things that um like create chips out of nothing and research uh, things instantly. Um, so if you have a password here, um, you'll be required to put it in to switch into Space Master mode. Otherwise, you can just leave it blank. Um, starting year is purely cosmetic. No impact whatsoever on the game. Purely uh, a number on display. Um, number of systems I'm actually going to drop down to 200 just to make it a little bit easier and a small universe. Um, lo local systems. Local systems are basically how clustered things are. So whenever you uh, whenever you discover a new system, it will roll a random number between one and two hundred. Um, if it roll, if it's if it's a local system, if it's a local system, it will roll within fifteen points uh, of the system you are exploring from. So which means that it's more likely to be a system that is nearby or linked to um, systems that you're exploring from. Um, the And this is the chance that this will actually trigger. So for the for new players, you can leave it, if um, but it allows you to customize how your universe looks. Uh, difficulty modifier is how much of an advantage the NPRs have. Um, so just starting sizes and not necessarily um, cheating or anything like that. Um, generation chances, how likely it, you are to run into um, non-player races. So this is for, uh, this is rolled every single time you explore a new system. Um, this number is for when a non-player race explores a system. This number is for when you explore a system. Keep in mind this only is rolled when a suitable planet is generated by the system generation. Um, here you can see the specs required. So if it doesn't generate a suitable planet, it will not attempt to generate a non-player race. Construction cycle time is how often all industry is calculated. Um, this is the default of five days. You can make it lower or higher. Um, lo lower means uh, the, the game works a lot harder during these cycles. So if your computer is weak, i.e. more than about five years old, um, you might want to keep this um, higher or anything like that. But lowering down doesn't mean that uh, you generate things um, more often. Uh, mineral and comets, pretty straightforward. Comets are very good sources of chunks of minerals because they usually have very high um, rates of mining, if not numbers, but we'll cover comets later. Uh, I made, um, just changed it to Empire from Federation because as an emperor of all mankind, I want to be emperor. Uh, government type is mostly cosmetic once you're in game. Um, the biggest impact is, as you can see, it changes how many research facilities, shipyards, tech points, and all that stuff you get. Um, just ratios, nothing else. So, but since you can change it yourself, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Now, um, this one here, Transnetonian Empire or Conventional. Conventional start means that you haven't researched Transnetonian tech yet. Now, I'm going to start Transnetonian for one simple reason. The first thing anybody ever really does when they do a conventional start is research Transnetonian te tech. 
all all it really does is puts two years of researching where you're doing nothing much more than just growing population so done so we're basically just going to skip all that this is species tolerance for planets um oxygen pressure deep gravity temperature and atmospheric pressure maximums if you raise this this will make it a lot easier to colonize uh hotter planets um no colder planets because hot up, it's easy it's a lot easier to cool down a planet than it is to heat up a planet if you raise this you can get more um, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere before your race uh, is no longer able to live out in the open um, which means that you're able to get that uh, planet hotter to a degree sun population um this is for the most part um it, it does make a small impact on how many uh minerals your population starts but the game is geared to uh, be balanced below 1000 million um for new players you can just leave it at the fault of 500 um, but I've set it to 600 to catch up on conventional tar um, conventional start worth of population growth. So, um, wealth and industrial percentage. This is just a rate of how much more effective your uh, wealth and industrial production is. Um, 100 is the balanced amount. If you make it, if you make wealth higher, you'll need less population to keep your uh, empire wealth up. Um, for industrial, uh, you'll need, you'll generate more research points and industri industry points and all of that stuff. Starting shipyards and starting research facilities, um, how many, just how many you start with. Um, this is distributed between uh, commercial and naval yards based on your player race. Um, no missile base for conventional start. Um, in conventional start, you can start off with missile bases, which are special uh, planetary defense installations that shoot ICBMs. I'm going to turn them off because they are rather bugged up. You can't refit them, um, but they can be useful for preventing uprisings early on because it will keep your people happy. Solid jump points. How many jump points are guaranteed to be in Sol? Um, zero is random if this is too much lower than five you might have the problem of running into dead ends and if you run into too many dead ends especially if your clustering is very high you could literally cut yourself off from the entire universe and yeah not very good so make sure that you have plenty of jump points out of salt um this will tell this will just identify whether you actually need to do a salt survey or not um for geo survey or grav survey starting tech points you only get you only get this in transutonian empire in conventional um this is disabled um i'm just going by the default amount uh, it's gone up a little bit because of 600 so you might you'll have a slightly different amount um you'll need to use space master mode to distribute these at the beginning so make sure that you don't forget your password i would not recommend uh, assigning tech points automatically because now you get a lot more control over, over your empire that way. Um, Sol system, we're, we're going to start in Sol because it's easier and I don't want to spend the next four, a couple of hours creating a starting system. Uh, we're going to run with all three um, spoiler races, Precursors, uh, Invaders, and Star Swarm. Um, we are not going to be generating a non-player race from the beginning because I want to have the uh, opportunity to take a, be a little bit slower. Um, but we'll be able to generating empires as NPRs. Um, make sure that this one here is not tipped. Um, when an NPR is generated as a non-transnewtonian, it will remain non-transnewtonian. So a conventional NPR will never get out of conventional. <clears throat> Um, no overhauls, we're going to leave that off. We want, we want uh, maintenance failures so I can show you the full uh, range of ship design. Jump gates, well, we're going to leave them off. This will basically place one on every jump point so they don't need jump drives. Uh, realistic com uh, command potions, we're going to keep this on because that, that way we don't have to promote people manually, which can get tediously micromanagement. 
And we're going to have com uh, political bonuses off. Uh, political bonuses basically allow commanders to raise up in rank without necessarily ra raising up in skill. Um, so with this on, you have the possibility of having, say, um, a fourth tier commander that doesn't actually have much skill in doing anything at all. Um, infinite fl fleet penalties, we're going to leave this on because I want to show you ta uh, task force training um, and what effect it has on the game. We're going to have the real world systems off. Real world systems um, will generate star systems based on um, real life stars. So stars will be named after real life stars and uh, it will generate bodies around them based on that. Um, I'm going to leave this off because um, things like nebula, nebulae will only generate if this is off. Um, I believe black holes as well will only generate if this is off, unless Steve has put some in there. Um, orbital motion of the planet and moon. So I'm going to leave this on because it's fun, um, but I'm going to turn the asteroids off simply because very quickly, and especially with the Sol Start, very, very quickly, you're going to be have thousands of asteroids in your game, and generating and tracking all of them at once is going to put a serious load um, onto your game. Your all, the game already has in version 7.1, it already has a major problem with slowdown with civilian shipping. Astro adding, adding asteroids in the mix just means it's going to slow down faster. And this doesn't really matter, but if you're generating a custom game and you have NPRs which are in the same system, um, you want this on because NPRs are extremely territorial. They will pretty much shoot to kill anyone and anything that goes near that planet. And having another race on that planet will guarantee a war. So um, this can be useful. So... <clears throat> Now they've gone through all of those. I'm going to generate this. It's going to take a while. Um, don't worry about how long it's taking. Aurora is famous for finishing what it starts. Unless it flat out crashes out back to desktop, it will always finish what it's doing. Guaranteed. Um, it's very good like that. So we'll let it spin for a bit. <clears throat> and we'll get one more pop-up saying that it's complete in a moment. And there it goes. Click OK, and we're back here. So this is this shows you a very quick summary. Um, there's the game name, max number of systems, generation chance, difficulty construction and generation, comets, truce, passwords, styling gear, and all the various check marks. Um, with detection, um, this will uh, allow you to get around. Um, NPRs which are stuck in mutual combat with each other. This is not really going to be a problem with us. And for disasters, you can also set um, the starting star warming up or cooling down, which is, of course, going to change the temperatures on all the planets. We're going to leave that off because, yeah, what we want to be able to explore the game without trying to... Um, without without having to worry about moving our population further and further out or in or getting the hell out of dodge. So, um, 40 minutes is going to take a cut. Hopefully, you, uh, hopefully YouTube won't complain about the few extra minutes, and we'll continue on with the game f uh, in the next one. <laughs>